If you've been struggling to get approved for loans or credit cards of any kind and you're not sure exactly what you've been doing wrong that keeps getting you declined and you need a little bit of guidance, this video is for you. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be reacting to a video from Noel Randall, self-proclaimed real estate and finance expert. She'll be going over five things to never put on your credit card application that should increase your chances of getting approved for the line of credit that you've been looking for. Let's take a look. Five things to never write on a credit card application. Okay, I know that you guys are wanting credit card approvals. You want those business credit cards, you want those personal credit cards, but way too many times you are writing the wrong thing on those applications and you are getting declined. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you exactly what not to write on them, what would be a better response so that you can get approved. Let's go. No way. Oh no, we don't do intros. No. So let's talk about personal and business credit card applications because you can actually get business credit cards and personal credit cards and in many cases you can get both of them at the same time. I have literally walked into a bank, opened up a checking account, walked away with a personal credit card and a business credit card and a business line of credit. Like literally walked into the bank with a little bit of money and walked out with more money than I came in with and I want you to be able to do the same thing. We're going to talk about what to put on these applications and more importantly five things to never write on an application okay the number one thing you do not want to write on your credit card applications is that you are retired or self-employed this is a big no-no so when they're asking about your employment do not put retired even if you are retired most likely you have some sort of income there's no actual reason to say you are just retired most likely you even have a business or you have a business that you can write that you are employed by that it would be a much better response so for example instead of saying I am self-employed I will say I am employed by Noel Randall Incorporated just using that as an example it is a business that I own it is an actual entity and I am employed by that business. I am not self-employed, okay? I'm not retired even when I am taking a break and I'm not working for a year or whatever I'm doing. I do not put that I am retired on my credit card applications. This is a high risk to lenders and in many cases, it will result in a decline. In many cases, even if you are retired, you have an income, you have a business, that would be a much better response than putting on the application that you are self-employed. In many cases, if you can just write that you are employed by your business, that will be a much easier response. In many cases, they do not ask for evidence of this and you can get approved. Now again, Noel Randall is not an attorney. I am not a tax advisor. I'm not going to be able to tell you exactly what to put on your applications, but giving you some guidance on things that are just like red flags as someone that used to work in banking, okay? So just giving you some real advice here and a better way to put that, okay? Number two, never put income that is ridiculously high or ridiculously low. And I'm telling you this literally as someone that makes over a million dollars per year. In many cases, I have actually had that as my income. Now we fixed a lot of that so that my business keeps the income and Noel Randall is not making all of this income so I don't have those tax consequences. But let me be real because I learned this the hard way. I've literally put my income being a million dollars and the underwriters just going crazy like da, da 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 what is this? But it makes no sense. They would have to understand that I make that type of money when you look at even just the mortgage on my house and a couple of the car notes and different things like that that are on my credit report, there's pot, there's no possible way I could put that I make $100,000 a year and, and afford the mortgage that I have, just as an example. So that got really um, you know, iffy. So, but don't put too high because it does. It just it just red flags. Underwriters are working people, and again, not saying anything disparaging about them, but their mind is really just not open to people that make a lot of money, and they just don't think it's possible, and they start questioning it, and it's a red flag for them. So I have really found to the place where I do not put over like maybe $275,000 per year, um, and quite frankly, that is kind of what my accountants and I are, are working. It is actually less than that of like actual income for Noel. Um, so do not put an income that is too high, like a million dollars per year. Don't put it. It's not necessary. You're just creating more angst for yourself and giving the underwriter a reason to decline you. Additionally, do not put an income that is too low. Again, on credit card applications, most of the time the income is stated. They are not going to ask you for evidence of this income. So put an income that will make you qualify essentially for the debts that you have. So if you have a $3,000 a month mortgage, you don't want to put that you make 
$3,000 per month in income. That's not going to jive. You're not going to be able to afford your debts. So you want to put an income that is not $30,000 per year. And you also don't want to put one that's a million dollars per year. You want to really be in there where it makes sense to the underwriter that you're able to pay your bills and you'll be able to pay this credit card without alarm bells ringing off that you don't make enough, mo mo enough money or you make way too much money and now they're like their little brains are all scattered because they don't believe that a person can make you know eight hundred thousand dollars per year and things like that it just it, it throws their brains into a tizzy do not put those really high incomes especially since you know it is stated they think that you're just lying um and don't put income that is too low so that you cannot cover your bills that is a really big thing no thirty thousand dollars per year no a million dollars per year keep it really simple in that mid-range I really would say don't put your personal income probably more than $275,000 per year. Obviously, that is something an underwriter can wrap their mind around, their you know very middle class mind around, and that is what they think people should make. So take th take this advice from someone that is a high earner that has ran into so many trouble with people just kind of questioning and just like, oh my God, how is this possible? Um, you know, and again, many cases, you know, these are people reviewing them and they have their own biases. They do. They have their biases about if you are a woman, if you are a person of color, different things like that. They do know that information about you and they they, they, they put that into their decision, unfortunately. So um, they're not supposed to. But these are human beings looking at these applications in many cases if it gets um, pushed to an underwriter. So know that. Think about that. Number three. All right. So before I let her move on to the next one. Let's discuss a couple of things that she just said in this last section, right? I kind of wanted to let it breathe a little bit, let you guys get the context of what she was saying before I stopped her a whole bunch of times. First and foremost, let's talk about the retired self-employed scenario. She's absolutely correct when it comes to this. When you put that you're retired or that you're self-employed, retired screams, I don't really make that much income because 99% of retirees are living on a fixed income and the fixed income is typically getting them from check to check, right? They're not able to invest off that retirement income. They're not able to live lavish off that retirement income there's not a lot of disposable income with that fixed income uh, also when you move to the self-employed area of that being your source of money when you're looking at self-employment you're looking at more risk banks credit institutions they are what's called risk averse they avoid risk they want to make sure they're going to get their money back so when you're putting things like retired or self-employed you're showing that a i don't make a whole lot of money b the money that i do make is gonna be in flux they don't want that type of stuff however she moved to an area that i don't like which is say that you're employed by your business well not everybody has a business she made a crazy assumption right there that most people have a business most people have some other income most people actually don't there's a lot of people out there who don't have llc's i would have loved to see her tell people hey prepare yourself for this portion of your life by doing a b c d e if you know that you're going to be going in retirement make sure that you open up an llc that you can be employed from or an s corp if you're making enough money that you can be employed by that way you can tell the truth on the application it's true that they don't often check but in the case that they do and it's happened to me and you don't have the supporting documentation of an LLC or an escort and you don't have those paycheck stubs from that company coming in. They can close your credit account. And in the case of companies like American Express, if they close one of your accounts for that reason, they will close them all. That can do a lot of damage to your credit report. And by the way, simply put, it is fraud. So don't just go willy nilly saying that you are employed by a company that doesn't actually exist. Prepare yourself by taking the necessary steps to make sure that you do have that additional income. Next, let's move on to the big one so far for me, where it's talking about what to put as your income. Your income is your income. Now, if you do run or own a company where your income is significant and you don't have a tax professional that's helping you mitigate those taxes by showing you how to structure that income, where it's not so high that you can actually put $80,000 and it be the truth, then you need to get a new tax pro. However, if you are making a million dollars a year, you need to put what you're making or what you're comfortable put that you're making. Now, you can understate your income and it won't be a big deal. But if you overstate your income, she said, don't put income that's too low. If you make 30 grand and you don't have access to another income source, i.e. via a spouse or something like that, and you put that you make 80 grand, you're going to have a problem when they do run your audit. Because guess what? If you rack up debt that you can't pay back and you get taken to court, and those court documents get pulled that you said you made 80 grand and never in your life on any tax document that they will request. Does it show that you also committed fraud? 
Now, let me give you a real hack for credit card companies. If you're married, you can utilize their income as your own personal income on these applications. For instance, if I make $200,000 a year and my wife makes $400,000 a year, we collectively make 600 grand. She has access to my money. I have access to her money. My bills are her bills. Her bills are my bills. So we are accountable for each other's stuff. I can then put that I have $600,000 of personal income. Also, she didn't tell you this, but let me give you this other little hack. When it comes to putting what your mortgage or what your rent is, you put what you are responsible for, your share. So if you have four adults that you live with that contribute to the rent or contribute to the mortgage, you're accountable for 20% of what that total mortgage is or what that total rent is. So don't put that your mortgage is $3,000 a month. If it's $3,000 a month, you can put your share of that $3,000 a month. In this case, it will be 20%, which will then drop the money that you have outgoing on top of helping you increase the money that you show that you have available to use towards this debt. That's the proper way about going and doing these things using the actual verbiage from most credit card issuers. Check it out for yourself. Credit card issuers will tell you flat out, do you have this income? And in this income, you can count any income you have access to in your household. I want you to look it up for yourself and then take the proper steps to actually secure credit in the proper way. Let's continue. Three, what you will do with the funds. This is so important. What will you do with the funds? They will ask you use of funds or what you plan on doing with the funds. And please do not say things like go on vacation or pay down my debts or, or different things like that. You really want to stick with answers that they understand and they want to hear. Their answers are things like marketing. They love marketing. That means you are going to be spending money to increase your business. You are going to be running ads. You're going to be doing promotions. You're going to be doing events. You're going to be doing things that increases your revenue. And that, especially with business credit cards, is what they want to see on those applications. Working capital is another one that is okay. But again, the better one is having an idea of what you're going to do with the money around marketing. They really, really, really want to know that you are going to be expanding the business and saying that this is for business expansion. This is for hiring employees. This is for running advertising. This is for having an event. Those are the type of answers they absolutely love. And those are the ones and the things that they want to lend to. Those are the real reasons they want to lend to you okay so no real estate investing do not say you know i'm planning on using this to flip a house that is a very high risk thing stay away from that and again i'm saying this to you as a real estate entrepreneur okay noel randall has millions of dollars of real estate this is what i do this is what i love and i do not say real estate investing because i know that they see that as high risk i also do not say new business adventures you know you don't want to say you're doing getting into new business ventures especially high risk ones like trucking or crypto or you know things like that you know say with things that are more safer e-commerce consulting things like that but again marketing and business expansion and working capital are going to be your number one answers for you i actually agree with her when it comes to this portion of the video now when you are giving your purpose especially when it comes for business credit cards because personal credit cards don't ask you this but when it comes to business credit cards when they ask you what the purpose of the funds is it should not be for frivolous expenditures not only should you not say that but it should actually not be for frivolous personal expenditures like vacations parties or whatever other stuff you can just waste money on it should be for the expansion of the company it should be for running advertisements it should be for buying office furniture it should be for paying staff should you have to take that route now one of the key things she went over was you don't want to say you're doing it for things like real estate investments or trucking or things like that or other high risk ventures this is actually true but i'm going to tell you this if you are going into those type of ventures you want to deal with companies that specialize in that type of funding don't go to a general credit issuer looking for high risk funding you're going to get yourself into some trouble because once again they do have the access should they need to sue you to pull what you spent that money on and if you got funded and the next day you went and bought a property when you said you weren't going to do that that once again is fraud Anything you put on a credit card application and then go against that or can't represent that, that is fraud. Stay away from fraud at all costs. Don't just say stuff. Go about procuring the right type of funding the correct way. Use of funds, okay? Number four. 
you want to pull your credit, okay? So before you actually go into uh, putting out an application, you should actually know what's on your credit report. This is very, very important. You do not want to go into this situation blindly, not knowing exactly what you're wanting to do, um, not exactly knowing what's on your credit report and your score. So pull your credit report before you actually go fill out these applications so you know what's up there. And in many cases, you can fix it before you start applying. Um, it is so important that you pull your credit, okay? It's so important that you know what's up there and you are already ready with an answer and that you are not caught off blindly. So if they ask you questions about specific things on your credit report, you are there to answer. Number five, no child support or alimony as your sole purpose of income, okay? So if you live off of child support, if you live off of alimony, those are very like volatile types of income. You are relying on someone else. Um, banks and lenders do not like to see those. So if you have other sources of income, that would be a better thing to do and to say and not even mention the child support or the alimony. In most cases, that is not going to do you any good. I know they ask you that, put all your income in there, but then they just start questioning it. It opens up a can of worms. You most likely do not want to get into it. And most likely you don't need to get into that. In most cases, your child support is for your child. So to say that is your income is uh, alimony, of course, is money that your spouse, you know, your ex-spouse owes to you. So it is looked at a little bit differently. But again, it is reliant upon their income, their earning money, not necessarily anything that you are doing to earn income. And they really want you to be employed. As I have mentioned before, underwriters, especially at banks that are, are giving these credit cards out, they are very middle class, middle thinking people. Again, not saying anything negative, but just think what they think. They want people to be very average, very middle of the road. And someone getting $10,000 dollars per month in child support or alimony or something like that just jars their brain in many ways and they just want to decline the application for that even if you have sufficient income so in many cases this is not a boost you do not want to put that on a credit card application in any way shape or form even as other income it usually just does not help to say that that's what it is so I don't recommend you put that but especially do not put that that is your only source of income that is a problem if your only source of income is child support and alimony so there you have so <laughs> here we go again with her straight up telling you what to put or what not to put instead of telling you how to prepare for it if you're receiving 10 grand a month in alimony you should be using that money to invest or to create another business create another source of personal income for yourself straight up telling people to put something or not put something on an official credit card application is wild to me she actually put this in video and while you can say all you want to disclaimer this is not financial advice or not legal advice this is reckless and the reason it's reckless is because she's not preparing you how to avoid having to put this on a credit card application i.e if you have child support, yes, that money should be allocated to your child. It definitely should not be counted towards money that you can spend towards your own personal debt. But if you do have alimony coming in, you should be doing something with that money that can increase it for your own personal income. So teach people how to do that. Get your passion project going. Start your LLC. Have something legitimate in place where you do not have to put that alimony as your sole income. Because like she said, that credit card institution or credit issuer is not going to want to bank on whoever's paying you the alimony having steady income. They don't know what the source of their income is. They could be a self-employed person. They could themselves be living off alimony. As crazy as that sounds. They could be in trucking. They could be in real estate. They can have any source of income that this institution would consider risky so they're not gonna bank on that because they can't find out where the money's coming from they want stable income but I draw the line at telling people exactly what to do when it comes to putting information on a credit card application and when it comes to number four I skipped through that because it was basically an advertisement for a credit repair company but that should have been number one before you start considering filling out a credit card application or a loan application you should know what your credit scores are and not just your FICO 8 bank card score depending on what type of loan you're going for you should know what your industry credit scores are your FICO 9 score FICO 10 FICO 10 T FICO 5 FICO 2 FICO 8 your bank card scores your auto loan scores your mortgage scores now there's a couple of resources that I use to figure this information out personally I have two of them the first one I use comes through my score IQ you can visit 9ficos.com to check out what your industry FICO scores actually are and you can do it for just $1 for a seven-day trial so 
So I would take that route first. Second, I love myfico.com. Now they're a little more expensive and they provide you with all 27 industry scores. This will keep you ahead of the game when having to deal with credit card applications and not worrying about what they're going to run into because you have no idea what your scores are. But forget about using that for credit card applications. You should know what your FICO scores are no matter what, whether you're applying for something or not. Now that we reached the end of the video, you guys, I thought she gave some good tips that can help you guys apply for credit cards in the future. However, some of her advice does push the limits of ethical and practical boundaries. Be careful not to misrepresent yourself whenever you're filling out an official credit card application of any kind. And also what she should have put in here before anything, because this kind of turned into a more of a do's and don'ts scenario, is that you can utilize the pre-approval tools by most of these credit card issuers before you ever even have to fill out an official application. You can test out what works and what doesn't before you actually incur a hard inquiry. In 2024, there's not a lot of guessing games left to be played here. You can find out all the information you need to to about an 80% certainty of whether or not you'll even actually be qualified for the line of credit you're looking for. Utilize the tools at your disposal. Google pre-approval tool for Capital One, pre-approval tool for American Express. Most of these companies will tell you whether or not you will qualify without giving you a hard inquiry, which can hurt your credit score. And above all else, stay as transparent as possible with your lenders. This will help you build trustworthiness and that relationship will get stronger and they'll offer you more and better products in the future. And I know a lot of my followers and subscribers are struggling with bad credit. If you guys are trying to fix your own credit and you don't want to pay a credit repair professional thousands of dollars to try to do it for you and you're looking for a solution to help do it for yourself, check out this video next. Be blessed.